it's summer dress season no layering tea for this gal so in this video today i'm giving you a behind the scenes tour of the sewing cave so you only see yeah, i don't know maybe three five feet behind me and you do not see the massive space that is the sewing cave it is the largest bedroom in the house i'm very fortunate it is bigger than my master bedroom <laughs> my husband loves me we actually moved states to find a cheaper place to live so we could buy a house big enough so I would have a bigger sewing space. And it has been amazing during COVID. I have a tiny corner that I had to give up for work from home, but I love this. So I do want to kind of be upfront with you that this is not what I would consider my dream space, but it works for me. And I think as sewists, when we set up our sewing room, we always have these kind of like grand ideas of what our sewing space should look like, but try not to compare my space to your space. I do have a lot of gadgets. I have a lot of space uh, and I know I'm very fortunate for that. So I just wanted to kind of share with you realistic what my sewing room looks like day to day. It was filmed a couple weeks ago after I had to clean everything up when my Peloton arrived. So uh, it currently is a little bit messier, but I hope you enjoy the behind the scenes tour. And we're entering the sewing cave. And yes, that is red shag carpet. I'm a huge fan of nerd art, so you will see a bunch of it in my sewing room. So we have this beautiful watercolor. Dovahkiin, Skyrim, my favorite video game of all time. And a vintage inspired of Harley Quinn and the Joker. I'll put all this info in the description box. And this is an angelic creature. I don't know, I just liked it. And then Kill Bill, Beatrix Kiddo. And I have a mirror hanging on the back of the door for the garage. It's good enough. I might upgrade soon. It's a little bit small. And here's the mess of my pegboard system. Everything is kind of at eye level, uh, and I only have to dig a little bit for stuff, but it is a little bit of a mess, and I have stuff put on precariously. It's like precariously organized. I don't know if that's a real statement, but um, everything I need is out. I've got my, my rulers, my thread. Oh, let me scooch through here. Can I scooch? Now the angle's wrong. Okay, hold on. Let me back up. There we go. There's my beautiful thread that you see behind me when I'm filming. And that lily was painted by my sister-in-law. I have a dragon art and kind of this um, fairy-like creature. Behind all of that satin is my fabric. And here's my recording setup. I have my laptop, everything kind of out in the open, lots of cables. My favorite pattern alteration book. It's a little bit expensive, but I'll put a link in the description if you look into it, but it's got great information. And then here is my external microphone. It's Yeti and a gaming laptop that I use for everything, editing, recording. I have a webcam. It works well. It was cheap. Let me get closer. And then you can see um, it like flips up. I've got it attached to a stand that lets me kind of face it down and twist. And this sometimes I'll hook my phone to and get close-ups and it's screwed onto my table. And then I have a ring light and I can bend and kind of face it towards the table for overhead shots. And here is the costume closet. It is a mess. So you will only get a sneak peek. I may go through all of the costumes I've made. Um, if you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments. Here's another one of my pieces of art that I like. And I'll put the information on the artist in the description. And then this is uh, a Marilyn Monroe inspired piece. It's beautiful. Here's my workstation. Yep, cables are a mess. Here's a blanket because I always get cold. And this is why I haven't been filming as much. My Peloton Bike Plus. I absolutely love this thing. And it's sandwiched right next to my pattern cabinet. And here's all of my delightful clutter and you can see it's kind of stuffed to the brim and it's a little bit of an older one so um, my patterns are kind of smushed in here um, and a lot of these vintage patterns that you're seeing here I did inherit from my grandmother I have them in comic board comic book bags and comic board um, but they're not quite the right size I haven't gone through and like cut them down like I should so that's why you're seeing kind of lots of plastic and things kind of disheveled as I close um, but yeah all of these drawers are filled to the brim 
Um, I do need to do a little bit of a cull, but you know, I can always use patterns. I pick sleeves off, I do alterations, I grade. You've seen this channel, you know the stuff I do. And here is the mess. That's all these like findings, some fleece squares. The bin is oversized patterns that don't fit in my cabinet. I've got patterns I've recently used, like the wanted tee, some of my recently acquired vintage patterns, like there's a gunny sacks. Oh, I love that blouse. Um, yeah, lots, lots of things on my to make list. And there's the things that I binge watch, Harry Potter, Bones, Anastasia, Chocolat. Ooh, here is my cover stitch. I've only used this a couple of times. I'm still learning. It is a Genoma, what, Genomi 900 CPX. It doesn't have the greatest reviews, but it does the job. My Blu-ray, my sound bar, my Apple TV, my Bernina attachment feet, Ooh, and my Serger. This is new to me. I bought it in the pandemic. It is just kind of um, a brother. I got it off Amazon. I'll put it in the link, but it works really well. And this is my PT. This is the most expensive sewing thing I've ever bought. She's an embroidery machine. She does all kinds of things. I love this machine. It's beautiful. Then here is the flat screen. I have, oh, and there's the painting. I have it screwed onto the wall and it twists and then I can have it kind of facing wherever I'm at and there's more artwork. We've got Mulan. I love that. Um, and then that I found at a thrift store and then I just I love all my artwork and then where I keep my iron and ironing board is behind the garage door and then I just kind of pop it out when I need it and here is the fabric stash or at least part of it I have it hanging um, in a calyx unit folded up and it's covered by satin that I just kind of poke holes on and hung on um, 3m command strips uh, and it does the job and I can always take them off later if I decide I don't want to have that and it didn't damage, you know, the the cheap wood of the Ikea. So you can see all of that. And here's all of my, um, these are more of my technique and my vintage sewing books. I have a lot. Um, I have probably read about a third of them and I'm a sucker for vintage sewing books. So I buy them if I see them. My embroidery box, my skirt sloper, um, my buttons, some paper elastic and that's all of my muslin um, so heavy light some boil um, there's some canvas some cotille for corset making which I still haven't done yeah oh yeah that's the cotille and then there's my pattern paper and then here is the stash I have everything folded so I can see it I tried rolled it didn't work out too well for me so I moved back to folding there's my wool I still have some fleece. I don't buy that anymore. I have my silkies. I have some printed chiffon, some vintage, some fancy fabric, my jeans. I've got some cold rayon in there, um, some plain colored cotton, some more fel felt and fleece, some linens, some cottons that are a different weight than quilting. Uh, we've got some corduroy, some like kind of swimsuit knits. We have some more linens, and there's the cat hobs, some flannel, quilting cotton, heavyweight knit, more heavyweight knit, uh, printed knit, more heavyweight knit, lots of quilting cotton. I did recently go through and kind of cull this, and it's in a box waiting for my mom. So when we're both vaccinated, we're going to visit. And here is how I get my fabric so organized is I have a piece of cardboard cut out 14 inches by 12 inches and that is one inch smaller all the way around than the dimensions of the calyx Ooh, coffee can't work without coffee and this is just a um, I got it from Joann's it's just a cutting mat that I put on top of the white tables from Ikea and I, of course, have tons of stuff under these white tables from Ikea. Uh, what do I have? More uh, satin. And I didn't even bother hemming it. I just kind of folded it to the length I needed. Um, wool? Wool, yes. That top one is wool. More wool. Uh, I don't know what that is. Oh, interfacing and works in progress. And I need to get a clear bin. What is that? Oh, it's my knitting, <laughs> which I haven't touched in a while. That's why I couldn't remember what was in there. Uh, okay, let's take down the rest of the satin. Oh, trims. Yeah. If you've seen any of my videos, you know I'm a sucker for trims. 
Uh, a lot of that I did inherit from my grandmother, but I have been building up that stash quite a bit. And then that bottom bin is all of like my lingerie. Um, I have made some slips. I have never made underwear and I have made a couple of bras, but my, my boobs are a little bit too big um, and I haven't been able to get it to work, but that is on my to-do list. And here's more mess. My Bernina accessories. Um, I don't know what's in that bag. We move my ring light and I have cords everywhere. Uh, that's what happens when you've got like three plugs and tons of electrical toys. Oh, those are all my PDFs that I printed out recently and paper mess. Um, I keep a lot of my notions in these bins. So I have my zippers. Um, I've got some interfacing strips. I've got some findings and some beads. And what is in there? Oh, okay. So this is like spray adhesive and some tools, some horse hair, and I need to put things into that bin. And then some of my extra books are right here. So um, these are, you know, like the, the sewing patterns books. I hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes tour of the sewing cave. I will put information about some of the things I called out, especially all of the nerd art in the description box. But if you do have any questions about anything I showed you today, please put it in the comments. And I hope that you like and continue to watch. Uh, I do have uh, over 100 subscribers now, so that is amazing. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.